Dividend Growth Investors, bonjour, Mikey Roux here. Welcome to day number two of how to invest a lump sum of money in 2024. Yesterday, we have discussed the fear that we have to put all that money one shot before the market crash or not. And then waiting is not an option in how I decided on my side to invest in dividend growers. Actually, I know a thing or two about investing a lump sum of payment because in 2017, I quit my job at the bank to focus on dividend stocks rock at full time. And then I received the pension plan value um, to invest and I received like more than $100,000, decided to invest it all in dividend growers. So far, so good. I'm more than double. I have more than double my money so far. And today, we're going to look at how you can um, invest in different sectors and how you can start shaping your portfolio, probably on paper, before you pull the trigger. So we're going to look at the role of each sector in your portfolio. We're going to do a quick recap of what happened uh, last year, and I'm going to do. I'm going to offer you a few suggestions to start looking at. Obviously, no buy or sell recommendation here, but more like ideas that you can look into, into three sectors that did not perform well last year, and then you kind of increase your chances to do something interesting for the next year. So let's look at what are the role of each sector in your portfolio? As you probably know already, asset allocation and sector allocation are key component to explain your returns from one year to another. For example, in 23, if you were heavily invested in technology stocks, no surprise here, you did incredibly well. On the other side, if you were also heavily invested in 22 in technology stock, that didn't go well for you. So it's important to understand the strengths and the weakness of each sector. I like to categorize them into three categories, which is the first one, income versus stability. And then you have growth on the other side and in between you have both. Uh, so for both, let's get started with those already. For financials, I'm thinking a little bit more about the Canadian side, to be honest, with Canadian banks and life insurance companies that offer you a great balance between a stable income and some growth potential. So Canadian banks did very well over the past few years. Um, it has been a little bit harder uh, for the past three, four years since COVID. But before that, they were even able to go head to head to the, with the S&P 500 and still report some interesting growth. Uh, on the communication services, uh, on one side, you have telcos that are paying a good yield, which is a good balance between growth and also income. And on the other, well, you do have all those technology stocks such as Meta and Alphabet that runs Google that are, that are also in that categories. As a dividend growth investor, this is not a sector that has a lot of options besides a few telecom communication stocks. There's not much there. In the industrial, it's great because you have companies that have been around for centuries. You have some dividend kings in there. You have dividend aristocrats. You have like large businesses that are well established and they are quite cyclical. So they could benefit from either a up cycle or, and, or you could suffer during a down cycle. So this is why you have kind of like a little bit of both where you know the business could be stable for a long while and some others will be geared a little bit more towards growth. On the income stability sector, well, you'll find a classic consumer staples. I mean, talking about food, talking about beverages, talking about grocers. I don't really like tobacco stocks. I know you're going to tell me, but Mike, look at their yield. Well, this, this is the only thing that you should look at because if you look at the big picture, it's not that great. So yes, there is a yield, but there's nothing else. There's no total return here and there's not much growth vector moving forward. So I'm not too sure I would settle to leave money on the table just for the sake of getting a high yield. Um, we have REITs. REITs is an interesting sector where you have multiple subsectors or industries. It is great because you can have a wide diversification inside the same sector. For example, if you have office REITs, retail REITs and apartment REITs, they don't necessarily um, react to the market event the same way. And then if you look at industrial REITs on the other side or data center, well, they're completely different business model. So it's a great place where you could have 20, 25, maybe 30% of your portfolio. But as long as you're invested across different industries, you're still well diversified. 
Healthcare services are uh, a little bit better on the US side than, on Can uh, than in Canada. Uh, in Canada, there's not necessarily dividend growers there. So I, ri I rather focus on some big pharma, maybe um, medical devices such as Abbott Laboratories, for example, or Lamite Vascular. You have like a, a great combination here of growth and income. But what is important here to remember is even if we enter a recession, healthcare companies will continue to do well because healthcare is usually at the top of priority when you look at your budget. Utilities, um, they've been known to be stable, but they have been quite hectic as of late. The thing is, with the raise of interest rate, we also saw a bunch of income-seeking investors getting out of the market and going after bonds and GICs. Keep in mind, those guys, they wanted to have a 4, 5, 6% safe yield. They could not find that with bonds and GICs in the two, between 2010 and 2020, but they can find that now on the market. So what happened is they're just thinking, well, I'm gonna get rid of those utilities. I made a bunch of profit on them anyways, and I'm gonna go back to my old investor's habit, which are a lot safer and less volatile. So that was a hit, but in general, we kind of need power, we need water. So it is a great place to start if you are looking for more stability and if your goal is not to beat the market, but rather heavy, having a comfortable retirement. On the growth side, you have consumer discretionary, following the economy, obviously. So when the economy booms, those companies are making a lot of money, so that's great. Information technology, I don't really need to explain that to you from a dividend growth perspective. Uh, semiconductors, some software companies like Microsoft are great, but go for the old tech, those that are mature enough to pay a dividend and don't get blighted by the yield there. You're better off with the low yield, high growth stocks such as Microsoft, um, Texas Instrument, uh, Broadcom, or Apple, for example, those are the companies that are doing a little bit better. But yeah, just go with the mature businesses that still generate a lot of cash flow that can grow their business and at the same time reward shareholders. Finally, as you can notice, I've put energy and materials at the bottom of the chart. It's still growth, but from a dividend grower perspective, those two sectors are not my favorite just because they're super volatile and commodity price goes up and down, businesses are having a hard time generating cash flow consistently. So when they go up, well, they look like geniuses. They pay down their debts, they buy back shares, they increase their dividend. When commodity price goes down, what happened? Well, they get into debt, they're short on cash flow, and they cut their dividend. This is not the type of investments I'm looking for, but it doesn't mean you cannot make money out of them. You just need to be smart enough to buy them at the bottom and sell them at the peak. But those, I will let, let, leave that to you to find out. Here's a quick overview of how sectors have done in 2023. And I want to talk about the bottom three. So energy sector, consumer staples, and utilities. Why? Because most of the time, if you're waiting on the sideline right now and you have money to invest, you're looking for safe bets, right? You're looking for companies that are not overvalued and not about to crash. So technology sector, communication services with Meta and Google may feel a bit uncomfortable at this point where valuation seems rich and it's kind of like difficult to identify a clear buy. On the other side, you may feel a bit better to start your research with sectors that did not perform last year. If we go back in time in 22, the top three worst performers were actually technology, communication services, and consumer discretionary. So it doesn't always happen this way, but this year, the bottom three became the top three. So sometimes there is that balance on the market. So let's take a look at some interesting ideas from those three sectors. First sector to look at, utilities. It has been a very difficult year. I've already told you about the higher interest rate pulling away the uh, income seeking investors. Obviously, those businesses are also capital intensive. They have a lot of debts. So debt has become a burden. And on top of that, the renewable energy stocks are not doing great at all. What you see on this graph is Nextera Energy Partner. They announce in October, well, end of September, as you can see, a big drop. That's when they announced, oh, we're not going to grow double digit or distribution anymore. It's going to be between five to eight percent going forward. So they didn't cut their dividend, but yet 
they announced that they had difficulties and to finance their projects next to our energy partner do two things they get more financing which has becoming more difficult or they issue more shares which not is, is not a problem when your shares goes up but when it goes down like this it becomes impossible to get some value and finance new projects at this time NEP is in a delicate situation where they say they have enough liquidity to go through 24 and go through their CapEx plan without having access to the market. If it happens and they can push back their share up, they will be in a better position. If it's not working fine, my bet is next to energy may buy back NEP. So this one, high risk, high reward, not too sure would touch it. But I mean, if you have some play money on the side, that could be interesting to do more digging. But again, that's definitely not a buy or sell recommendation. If I had $2 to put, I would actually go with American Water Works on the US side, mostly because the stock price has not been doing much since 2022, but the company is actually growing their revenue and slightly growing their earnings per share as well, but they keep increasing their dividend. Uh, the amount of money that needs to be invested in water treatment and in water utilities in general is constant, it's capital intensive, but it also means that America Water Works will have plenty of room to go see the regulator and say, hey, I would like to increase the rent. So that could be an interesting one to put some stability in your portfolio. On the Canadian side, one utility that I found quite interesting right now is Capital Power. You can see revenues going up, earnings going up, and dividends going up, and yet the stock price is dragging since 2022, the summer of 2022. Uh, one thing I really like about them is they made acquisition recently while they diversified their portfolio. So now they have become a utility with 50% of their business in Canada, the other 50 in the US. And most importantly, one thing I didn't like about Capital power was its dependence to Alberta economy with 38% of the revenue coming from there. Now with those new acquisition, it goes down to 31% and I think it's a better idea. So then you don't depend on a specific uh, area in the world for their economy to do well. Now with 50% exposure to the US market could be quite interesting to follow this one moving forward. On the energy sector, what do you see here on the graph? You have the oil barrel price that goes up and down like there's no tomorrow all the time. And you also have the natural gas spot price, which is quite interesting as well because it had a peak during 2022 because of the war and so on. But just to show you how businesses and people are able to adapt the, everything has been like, oh, it's going to be crazy. Europe is gonna run out of gas and they're all gonna die frozen during winter of 2022, that did, uh, 2023. That didn't happen. People find other ways and now the price of natural gas has been going back to pretty much the same level of 2019, 2020. In this sector, I'm not gonna offer you tons of choices because I focus on dividend growers. One rare companies that defies gravity, that defies recessions, and also defies oil bust is Canadian Natural Resources. While this company's stock price was pretty much stable for almost a decade before COVID, now we can see that there's some strengths building up. They're paying down their debts. They're increasing their dividend like there's no tomorrow. So that will be interesting to see how it's going to happen, what's gonna happen next. Keep in mind, if you buy CNQ today, chances are that if the oil barrel goes down, your stock price will go down accordingly. And if it goes up, then you're gonna look like a genius. So do not necessarily expect that the stock will skyrocket in the future, but it pays a safe dividend yield. It is quite generous and it has been increasing for more than 20 years. So um, as I enter 2024, I'm looking for stability. I'm looking for relatively safe pick. And this one, while all the other companies were cutting down their dividend, CNQ was among the rare one that actually increased it in 2020. So keep that in mind when you do your research. Last sector, but not the least, consumer staples. As you can see on both sides, Canadian and the US, it was down, was not a great year for investors in the consumer staples. Um, we saw a lot of drug loss, uh, weight, weight loss affecting companies around chocolate, snacks, and beverages. 
At this point, I am not 100% convinced that this is exactly what's gonna happen, that people will stop eating Doritos, drinking Coca-Cola, and stop going to the restaurant. I still have my reserve on that. I'm not saying that the drug is not working, but I'm saying that people like to treat themselves and they will may just say, you know what, I'm going to try to have a healthy living or I'm just going to stop taking drugs like Ozempic um, and whatever happens with my weight will happen. In this sector, I have three favorite stocks. Um, first one, not gonna come as a surprise, Alimentation Costar. Again, you're entering 2024 with a lot of money on the side. You're not too sure what to do about it. Well, go for a company that says it's going to deliver and that delivers, right? So five years ago, Alimentation Costar came out with a very detailed and solid plan that in five years, they would double their earnings per share and they actually did it. They actually did more than that over the past five years. So right now you may argue that paying 74 bucks for that stock is overpriced. Well, it's pretty much the same valuation it was traded five years ago, it's just that the price val doubled in value because the earnings per share doubled in value. This is a machine of growth and I invite you to go back in my channel and watch other videos about Kushtar. You're not gonna be disappointed. Another quite surprising company this year, Costco, another com case of company where the business seems to be overvalued over and over, but keeps deliver double digit returns for revenue, double digit growth for revenue, earnings per share and dividend. And guess what? This year with a special dividend of 15 bucks a share, they paid more than my membership. So I was super happy to add Costco during the year to my portfolio. It has been a great acquisition. I've waited a long time before I pulled the trigger because I get that you may feel you're paying an overpriced, um, you, you, it may be overpriced, but at the end of the day, Costco is able to deliver. It offer a business model that is recession proof with their high renewable uh, renewal rate on their membership and targeting consumers that are making more money than the average. So being able to buy their membership and buy in bulk so they will be less affected by the recession. Last but not the least, Pepsi Cola. Uh, Pepsi Co, P-A-P, revenues going up, earnings per share is back on track as well to grow, the dividend is increasing all the time. Stock price getting hurt on those chatters that everybody is gonna be lean and not drink Pepsi and or eat snacks ever again. As I said, I don't believe that. That's why PepsiCo is in that list today. And I think that it is a rare opportunity that you may find to buy a stock that is trading under the five years uh, average of P ratio and also five years average yield. So it's an interesting idea here. Classic PepsiCo, everybody knows it, and it will go through all kinds of recession anyway. So that could be another one that you can add to your watch list. If you wanna know more information about stocks and you would like to have a complete sector review, I do have a webinar on how to invest in 2024. That will happen next week on January 10th. So just go in the link description below, click on the link, put your name and email address over there. You'll be registered for the 100% free webinar. If you cannot attend to the live event, register nonetheless, because I will be sending you the replay in your mailbox, no strings attached. I always will stop there for an hour to answer all your questions. So if you have like specific questions about stocks or about strategies that you wanna implement in 24, here's the best place to go. So, right, so tomorrow we're gonna talk about four of my favorite Canadian stocks for 2024. So my goal right now is to get you a bit more excited about investing your money in 24, leaving the sideline and starting investing, making sure that money is working for you. So tomorrow is four Canadian stocks, the day after will be four US stocks. So don't forget to like the channel, Subscribe to it to not miss the next videos. Turn on the notification as well. And until tomorrow morning, don't forget to stay invested.